Did you know that Bridgecom had a brand new hotspot, which they're calling the SkyBridge Plus? This is the third rendition of hotspot from Bridgecom. You can order it on their website, and the link will be in the description below. They will pre-program it for you so that all you have to do to get on the air is unbox it, plug it in, wait for it to boot up, and key up the radio, and you're done. We're going to take a look at it coming up. Shut up and sit down. Thank you for joining the channel today. My name is Jason. I'm KC5HWB. This is Ham Radio 2.0, where we do reviews, news, and how-tos of things that are new and sometimes not so new in amateur radio. Now, this SkyBridge hotspot has been out for a while, but this is the third rendition of it. I did a video about the original SkyBridge hotspot, which you can see linked right there at the time of this recording. But go back and watch that later. This is the new one. You can't buy that old one anymore. They did one version. They upgraded it to a new version, which they called the Plus. And this one, which I think is still just called the Plus, but this one has a brand new sleek case around it with a heat sink in the back. It's all pre-put together and ready to go for you. Antenna port on the top here. I'm going to switch over to the overhead cam, let you guys get a better look of it. This is the box it comes in, obviously. And I still like the fact that I that in, in the box, I, I pointed this out in my last video. This is not a toy. I'm like, well, heck, I'm going to box it back up and send it back then. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But anyway, so this is the unit here. You can see that right there. Focus. There we go. Uh, so there's some glare in there. There we go. So that's the unit right there. And it's it's a Pi 4 board. I believe it's a Pi 4. It might be a Pi 3 plus B board. It's one of the two. It's got HDMI uh, out right there. This is your port for uh, charging. That's micro USB for charging, typical Raspberry Pi. There's the pre-programmed image and micro SD card where the image is and all the information. On the back here, it's got bridgecomsystems.com, and that's the heat sink right there. I'll get it out of the glare. That's the heat sink right there on the back of the actual Raspberry Pi board. So that's what it looks like there. We're going to put this. It comes with this, in, this little antenna. It comes with a charging cable right here. Yep. This is an Ethernet cable. If you want to plug it into Ethernet, you can. It'll also work on Wi-Fi. This is a micro USB to cigarette lighter adapter, so you can run it in the vehicle. That's kind of fun. This is a wall wart for your USB cable, which the USB cable here, it's just a standard micro USB to USB-A. Plug that into the wall wart, and that's how you can power it at home. Additionally, it comes with this battery, which the original SkyBridge came with this as well. This comes with a battery pack so that you can even power it outside of your vehicle and your shack. So you can take it with you to a ham fest, take it with you to a restaurant, I guess, if you really want to do that. It's going to need an internet connection, of course, but you can always just hotspot that to your phone, or if you have a mobile hotspot, you can do that. But it comes with this really neat battery here as well, and that is something that most hotspots don't come with. This says it's a Model Z5 battery with a cat capacity of 5,000 milliamp hours. So, again, that's something that most hotspots don't come with. You can't power it outside of the vehicle or shack. So, Bridgecom includes this battery pack with their hotspot. And I always thought that was kind of cool. They did that with the last one, too. So, let's plug this in, turn it on, and see what it looks like. So, we've got this initializing, and it's booting up right now. Now, I asked uh, when Bridgecom said that they wanted to send me to send me this device to do a review that they did send this to me. So, and asked me to review it. And I was happy to do it because the last one I reviewed, I really liked. It's just a standard Pi star screen that comes up there. They will configure it for you. They'll ask your SSID for your home network and your password. And they will put all of that in there for you so that all you have to do is plug it up and go. Now, if you don't want to provide that, you certainly don't have to. Some people don't like providing their network, uh, their home Wi-Fi information. You can provide a fake password and change it later. You can provide a password, a network ID and password to your phone and go in there and reconfigure it if you want to. But the option is there. The option is there for you to provide them with that information and they will come up and they will say, hey, we'll provide, all you gotta do is plug it in. The other option you have is that it comes with an ethernet cable and you can simply plug it into your router or plug it into an Ethernet switch or something you have in your home network, and it automatically shows up in your router. Then you can go into your router, and you can 
find the device, log into it via IP, which we're going to do here in just a minute, and then set a Wi-Fi SSID yourself. If you don't want someone else doing that for you, you have the option to do all of that yourself. Some people are kind of leery and unsure of how to do all the steps I just named with setting your own, with plugging it into your network and finding uh, finding the IP in your router and logging in via that IP. If you're not comfortable with doing that or you don't know how to do that, then you can always do it this way with the ethernet. So once you get the device powered up, once you see activity on the screen, I've got it plugged in on the side over here, but you can kind of see that in the in the screen. We're gonna get, I'm gonna get another screenshot of it here in just a second. Once you see it on the screen, you can go find the IP address and it should show you the IP address on the screen of the hotspot device. And then you can go log into it. You just open a Chrome browser, or Firefox or, or Edge or whatever you want. DuckDuckGo should work too. You can open a browser, type in the IP address that you see on the screen, and you'll get a screen that looks like this. This is a brand new Pi-Star hotspot that has not been configured at all. Once again, BridgeCom will do all of this work for you if you choose, if you ask them to, if you request that they do that. Uh, you can provide them with as much or as little information as you choose to. But if you do this yourself, this is Pi-Star, and the password is Raspberry. It's a very default username and password. You can change that later if you choose. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to change this to Skybridge. Skybridge Plus. I've still got the original Skybridge around here somewhere, although I think I'm giving it away. This is my call sign, obviously. Frequency, I'm going to put it at, you know what, I'm going to leave it at 434. No, I'm not. I've used, in the past, I've used 434.450, so I'm going to use that here. Latitude and longitude, you can set that if you want to. I'm on Texas country, USA. You can put, you, you don't have to change all of this. You can change your, your location. You can put in your latitude and longitude coordinates. I'm going to put in the website URL of my own website. You don't have to do any of this to make this work. So the node type is private. I'm going to leave it there. It's got the APRS host overseas. I'm going to change it to, no, that's North America. Okay, N-O-A-M, North America. And it's set time zone in Los Angeles. I'm going to change that to Chicago. That's where I'm at, English, U.S. And I'm going to apply changes. So I'm going to set that first. Sometimes PyStar can get a little bit quirky if you try to change multiple fields in multiple places at the same time. So what I like to do is change that first and let it refresh and then come back. And then we'll go, go do a scan for the Wi-Fi. And I will enter my Wi-Fi username and password. And then I'll be able to unplug it from the Ethernet cable. And it'll just connect to my Wi-Fi at my home Wi-Fi. Okay, we're back to this main page here. So you can see these changes have been taken. Skybridge Plus, they took the space out. That's fine. Skybridge Plus, there's my call sign. That's fine there. Okay. Now I'm going to go down here to this wireless configuration. It says WLAN interface is down because it's not connected right here. So I'm going to configure Wi-Fi. And I'm going to scan for networks. And it says scan for networks 10 seconds. So it takes a little bit. Uh, few seconds for it to scan for ambient networks at your current location. And this is my network right here, QRZ. I've said that in previous videos. QRZ, so it puts QRZ right there in the SSID page. And then I can type in my password here, and it's going to mask my password. Just like that. And I can click on Save and Connect. And it comes back, and I, no, I don't want to save that. And now what I like to do is I like to reboot the device because, quite frankly, I think Pi-Star is still a little bit finicky. When you make major changes to it like that, I find that rebooting it is usually best. So I'm going to reboot the entire device right now and unplug the Ethernet from the unit while, I'm while it's rebooting. I'm not going to unplug the power. I'm just going to unplug the Ethernet. So let's go to power and reboot, and yes, I'm sure. Now I'm going to watch the screen flash. 
There it goes. Bring that over here. You will be redirected back to the dashboard automatically in 90 seconds is what this says right here. And now we come back and it is rebooted up to, it's got my call sign, MMDVM idle. It's got my IP address there at Wavelan at the top. Bring that up a little bit farther. There we go. So Wavelan zero at the top is 192.168.1.62. That's now the wireless IP address on my network. Coincidentally, the ethernet was at 1.61 a minute ago when I was showing that to you. So you can see today's date, you can see the transmit and receive frequency, and then it says kc 5 hwb forward slash in a seven digit number. So that means I forgot to set my SS, my user ID. I forgot to set my user ID. So I can simply go back in here. That is what the Pi Star dashboard looks like now. I can go into configuration. It's going to ask me for username and password again because it thinks I'm in a different de device because I'm on a different IP address. I would also suggest changing your password from something other than Raspberry eventually. I'm going to turn DMR on. I'm going to apply changes just like that. And I'm going to wait for it to refresh and it will bring up a few more fields to where I will be able to enter my DMR ID. If you turn on D-Star, it makes you enter something. If you turn on System Fusion, it uses your call sign. So you've got some different fields that pop up depending on where you are going. So, okay, there it is right there, but depending on what mode you're using. So I'm going to go to, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and just connect to, actually, you know what? I think I'm going to connect to TGIF network just like that. I'm going to go ESSID. Okay, so this screen right, this field right here popped up. Once I changed, once I enabled DMR mode right here, this seven-digit number was not showing beneath my call sign before. So now I'm going to go 31, and that's one of my DMR subscriber IDs, and I just know that because I've done DMR so much. Then I'm going to go to ESSID, and this is a number that goes on the back of your DMR ID. So I'm just going to choose 08 for, for the heck of it. And then color code 1 is good. That's fine. Apply changes. And now once the, uh, once the system refreshes, like you saw there, it also shows on the screen. Get that to focus. Oh, there it is. Okay. It also shows on the screen KC5HWB forward slash and my subscriber ID, which is 3148141, and I've got 07 behind it. It doesn't show the 7 on the screen. It just shows that, but you know what it is because you just said it. So it shows all that information on the screen. When you get this direct from Bridgecom, all of this information will already be in here for you. So when you connect it and let it boot up, it should show your IP address right there, assuming you've given them your home Wi-Fi network or maybe your phone Wi-Fi network information. Assuming you've given them all that, they'll pre-program it. It'll come up to that IP address, and then you'll be able to log into it and get to the dashboard, just like what we were looking at on the web browser over here. So you can do it either way. You do it from the, you can see the information from the screen, or you can see the information from the PyStar dashboard on the computer. You can do that either way. Now, these AnyTone radios, these guys right here, a great place to get those is Bridgecom Systems because they sell a full line of AnyTone products, mobile radios, uh, HT radios, anything new that comes out from AnyTone is going to be on BridgecomSystems.com. You can find that in the description below. I just keyed this hotspot up with my R Finder B1. Work, worked fine. You can see right there, it had a, a bit error rate of 0.6%, which is green, and that's fine. So now I'm going to key it up with my AnyTone radio. And there it is right there. Bring that up here. This is what the screen looks like when I'm transmitting. KC5HWB testing. One, two, three, four, five. And there we go. That's the TGIF talk group keying up through the TGIF network on the SkyBridge Plus hotspot. So you can, I could change networks. I could go to... That looks weird with that antenna in front of the microphone. I could change networks. I could go to Brandmeister. I could connect to BM3101 or 3103, whichever one of those are online right now. And I could uh, go to Texas Talk Group, New York Talk Group, wherever I wanted to, and key up wherever I 
talk in whatever network I wanted, but it's that easy. So completely plug and play if you choose for it to be, configurable if you want it to be. Who's got one of these? What do you think about it? PyStar is a great way to get onto DMR or DSTAR or System Fusion or wherever. It'll do cross mode between DMR and System Fusion and System Fusion and and uh, DMR. It will not do cross mode to DSTAR yet. Maybe we'll see that one day. I'm not sure. But, uh, but PyStar is a great system, and this one's really cool because it has the screen on it that tells you exactly what it's connected to, where it's connected, and what it does. So who's got one of these? What do you think about it? Put a comment in the description below. Thank you guys for watching today. 73.